Hey everybody, in our previous session we learned all the steps involved in statistics and today we are going to learn preferably the analysis part of statistics and what are we going to do in analysis? We are going to take a data set and we are going to learn about a value in that data set which will be the representative value which means it will represent the whole data set just like a group leader or a class leader represents the whole class or a president represents the whole country similarly we have this value which will represent the whole data set so here is the data about the total score secured by a student in five papers and each paper was out of 100 marks okay now the real question is which among these data values can we actually consider the representative value and for the same statistics provides us with many methods we will learn all those methods one by one and we will also see what are the characteristics of all those methods. More commonly, we analyze a data by finding its average. Okay, we must have heard, right? Average rainfall, the batting average of a batsman. Well, we sometimes also call this average as mean. All right. So what exactly we do in average or mean is we take the sum of all the data values and we divide it by the total number of data values. Uh, like in this case, we are going to add up 60 plus 70 plus 74 plus 78 plus 78. And there are total 5 data values because there are 5 papers, right? So we are going to divide by 5. And what we get over here is 360 divided by 5, which is nothing but 72. And 72 is somewhere over here. So 72 is the mean. So we can say the average marks obtained in five papers is 72 and by that I'll be able to predict what kind of marks he must have got. So what can we say about the characteristic of mean is that it takes in consideration all the data values because we can clearly see we are actually adding up all the data values so it considers all the data values. Now at times I might not be interested in reporting average as my representative value. I might just be looking for a value which has the maximum frequency or which occurs maximum number of times like you know which is the most popular team or the maximum wickets taken by a bowler in many matches something like that okay so over here the student has secured 78 marks in two papers as compared to the other marks okay so I might be interested in just knowing this and such a way of reporting a value which has maximum frequency is called mode so in order to find mode, I don't really require all the data values. So unlike mean, this is different. It does not consider all the data values. Now, if we go by that, then it might happen that some other value might also repeat. Let's say if there were two 60s instead. So this will also be the mode. Okay. So a data can have one mode or more than one mode or it can have no mode at all. Now at times we want to take the representative value as the value which falls right in the middle of the data. We don't want to find the average, we don't want to find the value which has maximum frequency, but the value which falls right in the middle. That can be also done. So we look out for the centermost value. So in that case when we have to look out for the centermost value, the first step that we have to see is we have to arrange our data. Now it can be arranged in an ascending or the descending order. Now, in this case it has already been arranged so I will keep it as it is. Now the second thing we have to see is if the number of data values are odd number of data values or even number of data values. Okay. Over here we have 5 papers so we have odd data values. So in that case what we do is we count the data values and we see what is the data value that falls right in the middle. So 74 is the centermost value. Now this way of reporting the centermost value as the representative value is called the median. What it does is it divides the data exactly in half. That is I can say there is a lower half and there is an upper half having the equal number of data values right 2 and 2 okay. And what if we had even set of data instead of 5 papers he had like 6 papers okay. In that case, what we do is we see which are the two values that fall right in the middle and we take an average of those values. Okay, so over here we will do is 74 plus 78 divided by 2. Okay, and whatever value we will get will be right in the middle. 
okay and that would be the new median so what can we say about median is again it doesn't consider all the data values it only considers the values which fall right in the middle now since mean considers all the data values so if I might have a data value which is nowhere closer to the values that I have then the mean might change okay for example if instead of 60 I had 0 then the average will be 0 plus 70 plus 74 plus 78 plus 78 divided by 5 which will be 300 divided by 5 and that comes up to 60. We can see that the average has changed from 72 to 60 just because one value has changed. And this value is called the extreme point or the outlier because it is nowhere near the other four values. So what we can say is the mean gets affected by the outliers or the extreme values. How can we avoid this? Sometimes we don't take the extreme value and we trim the data and we only take the values that are good enough. Okay, then in that case, we will take the average of 70, 74, 78 and 78 and we'll divide it by 4 and what we'll get is 75, which is quite closer to the mean that we had got earlier. But still it is wrong because we have not taken an extreme point, but it can be used anyways. Now what about the mode since it doesn't consider all the data values so mode does not get affected by the outliers similarly median does not consider all the data values so even median does not get affected by the outliers so in statistics all of these ways that is mean mode and median which help us to find the representative data value are referred as the measures of central tendency so now let us take a recap of what we learned in this session. We learned to find the representative value. We have some tools in statistics called measures of central tendency. One such tool is average in which we take the sum and divide it by the total number of data values. For the mode, what we consider is the maximum frequency. And for the median, we consider the central most values. And we learned the characteristics of mean, mode and median, which will help us to decide which measure of central tendency we can use to analyze a data. In our next sessions, we will learn how to find mean, mode and median when we have a large data or when we have a group data.